Today I learned about a convergence test for series that I had never known before, and I thought it would make a good video, especially since I've got this Marathon Calculus live stream upcoming tomorrow. So maybe be on the lookout for that. So before we look at it, let's look at the ratio test, which is a lot more common. So let's say we've got a sequence of positive real numbers. We'll call them a sub n. Next, we want to suppose that the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus first term over the nth term is equal to l. Next, we get our conclusion. If l is less than 1, then the series converges. In fact, it absolutely converges, but we don't really need to worry about that because we only have positive values in our setup. If L is bigger than one, then the series diverges. And finally, if L is equal to one, there's no information to the convergence or divergence. And this is sometimes annoying, but luckily there's this other test called Rob's test. And that takes over when this limit is equal to 1. So you have to start by assuming the, that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n is equal to 1. And then you calculate the following limit. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of n times the quantity 1 minus a n plus 1 over a n. So that limit will set equal to L. Now if L is bigger than 1, our original series converges. If L is less than one, it diverges. And if L is equal to one, well, then you're unlucky again and we get no information. So let's sketch a proof for the convergence condition of this test, and then we'll look at an example. So we wanna suppose two things. Let's first suppose that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one over a n is equal to one. We have to have that in order to use this test in the first place. And then we'll also assume that the limit as n goes to infinity of n times 1 minus a n plus 1 over a n is equal to L, which is strictly bigger than 1. So that puts us in this condition down here. And then next, I want to notice the fact that L is bigger than 1. That means we can find some value r, which is from the open interval one to l. So if l is bigger than one, then there's gonna be some number between l and r, so that's what we'll take. And then also, using kind of the convergence properties of series, what we'll do is take n in the natural numbers, I'll use capital N, such that, if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, we have r is less than n times one minus a n plus one over a n. So let's see why that's possible. Well, we know that this limit gets closer and closer and closer to L, but if it gets closer and closer and closer to L, then that means we can always bound it above this number r, which is smaller than L. Now, if you want to think about this in terms of an epsilon n type setup, what we might do is take epsilon to be equal to L minus R over 2. And so we can always bound this bit of the sequence within epsilon of L. But notice if epsilon is equal to that, then that will force the term from our sequence to always be bigger than r. So that's the kind of setup that we've got going on here. Okay, so now let's do some manipulation on this inequality. So let's first notice that this tells us that we have r over n is less than one minus a n plus one over a n. But now we can rearrange this to have a n plus one over a n less than one minus r over n. Okay, so again, that's just from rewriting this like very, very slightly. But next we can notice that one minus r over n is less than or equal to one plus one over n to the minus r, where we just use a binomial expansion there but only keep finitely many terms. Finally, we can do some algebraic manipulation on this to write it as n plus one to the minus r over n to the minus r. And then we notice that this, what we're left with, I should say, is the ratio of 
terms from the following series, which is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the minus r. And we know that this series most definitely converges by something that's generally called the p-test. So here our r is bigger than 1 so that we know this thing converges. But then we've bound our series below something having to do with a series that obviously converges. So that means that our series must also converge. So like I said, this is just a sketch of the proof, but you can kind of get the idea here. In broader terms, we can think back to the proof of the ratio test, which compares our series with a geometric series. But this test, the proof of Rob's test, compares our series to a P-series. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this proof and then we'll look at an example. So like I said, now we're going to do an example. We've got the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 times 4 times 7 all the way up to 3n plus 1 over n squared times 3 to the n times n factorial. And I want to point out here that we've got a combination of something like a p-series, so this is n squared, something like a geometric series, one-third to the n, and then factorial type things. And so this combination of all of these different things really points us towards this being a good test. Okay, notice that the ratio of terms is part of this test, so we might as well calculate that along the way and show that the ratio test itself does not work. So we'll set all of this equal to a sub n and then really get going on it. So notice that a sub n plus 1 over a sub n well, that's going to be equal to 1 times 4 times 7 all the way up to 3n plus 1 times 3n plus 4. So that's the numerator of a n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared times 3 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial. So this entire term is a n plus 1. And now instead of dividing by a n, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of a n. That'll make it simpler. So I've got n squared times 3 to the n times n factorial over 1 times 4 all the way up to 3n plus 1. And now we can start canceling out like terms. So notice that this 3 to the n will cancel this 3 to the n plus 1 down just to the number 3. Next, this 1 times 4 times 7 up to 3n plus 1 will cancel this 1 times 4 times 7 up to 3n plus 1, leaving us with that 3n plus 4 term. Finally, this n factorial will cancel with this n plus 1 factorial, just leaving us with n plus 1. Keep in mind that, that n plus 1 factorial is just n plus 1 times n factorial. Now we can start simplifying. All of that is going to leave us with n squared times 3n plus 4 in the numerator, and then 3 times n plus 1 cubed in the denominator. We've got an n plus 1 squared and an n plus 1. Now we can multiply that out. That'll give us 3n cubed plus 4n squared in the numerator. And then using a standard expansion of this binomial, we'll have 3 times n cubed plus 9n squared plus 9n plus 3 in the denominator like that. So notice that as n goes to infinity, this clearly tends towards 1, just given the fact that we've got some our just given the fact that we've got a rational function in n. Okay, so that means we're set up to use Rob's test. Now let's calculate this limit. We've got n times 1 minus a n plus 1 over a n. But now let's think about 1 as 3 times n plus 1 cubed over 3 times n plus 1 cubed, but multiplied out so we have some simplification. Okay, so let's see what we get. We'll have n times, so expanding 1, we'll have 3n cubed plus 9n squared plus 9n plus 3 over the same thing minus 3n cubed plus 4n squared all over, well, that same thing. 3n cubed plus, I'll just put dot, dot, dot because all of it's the same. Now let's see what simplification can be had. 
This n cubed will cancel this 3n cubed. And then this 4n squared will cancel this 9n squared down to a 5n squared. And then after multiplying this n through, we're left with 5n cubed plus 9n squared plus 3n over this denominator. So we've got 3n cubed plus 9n squared plus dot, 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 those last couple of terms. But now as n goes to infinity, we just get the ratio of the leading terms, which is 5 over 3. That's clearly bigger than 1. But for our condition down here, that limit being bigger than 1 means that this thing converges. So we started with the series where the ratio test did not work, and we proved that it was convergent using this new test. And that's a good place to stop.